Okay, we want to right now revisit what we brought to you as one of the top trending. You know, whenever we talk about top trending, there are issues that caught our attention in the course of 24 hours. Now, this one was that the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Songolu, has said no administration is immune to mistakes. The governor said this while reacting to the outrage from Nigerians after the procurement record, or procurement record rather, released by the Lagos State Procurement uh, Agency. Uh, it showed some outrageous amounts were allocated for some items in the state budget. The governorship candidate of the Action Democratic Congress in Lagos, Funsho Doherty, had written an open letter to the state government asking why such amounts of money were allocated. The state procurement records showed the governor approved 7.5 million naira to replace liquid fragrance perfume as people like to call it, in his office, and three billion to purchase rechargeable fans for the office of his deputy, Bafemi Hamzat. Other contracts awarded by the state's public procurement agency, PPA, in the second and third quarters of 2023 had included approval of over 440 million naira for the purchase of a new Lexus LX600 bulletproof sport utility vehicle for use in the pool of the office of the chief of staff. The office of the chief of staff also got 18.5 million naira for the supply and distribution of 2,000 noila chickens across the local government areas and wards in the state. The governor in a statement by his spokesman, Boyega Akoshile, noted that the controversy was unnecessary, stressing that the state had nothing to hide in its public expenditure. Officers in Lagos State have come out to show that there could be mistakes on some lines of items. So Olu said Lagos had maintained open books for checks and balances, pointing out that the state had judiciously appropriated funds for projects and services that benefited the residents. He assured that his government will continue to publish its spending and keep it open for public scrutiny. We're being joined by... Um, Mr. Shegun Shokuton, a public affairs analyst, to help us make sense of all these problems, or all, all these uh, issues that we're talking about now. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Yes, let's start with the statement of the governor. All this uh, talk about the budget is unnecessary. How do you analyze that? Well, I think in the first instance we should... Um, Actually, just pass in, in passing, commend the legal state government for putting this information out on their public procurement website. Mm. And I say in passing because this is what they should do anyway. It's a requirement of the law. Um, it's something that they should do, even if the law doesn't require it um, for a government that claims to be um, a leading government, the center of excellence. This is something they should do anyway. But they've done it, and um, they should be told well done for doing the right thing. Um, so I think that has to be said. Um, the second thing is to then look at the issues that have arisen as a result of this and the responses that have come from um, the governor and um, um, his people, his spokespeople, uh, you know, <laughs> um, to, the, to the public outcry and the outrage about these things. And you find these responses very typical um, and um, symptomatic of the problems that we have as a society and as a country. Uh, the fact that our politicians truly, if we're being honest with ourselves, do not take us seriously as a people. They do not respect us. They do not care us. Um, they act with impunity, knowing fully well that nothing will happen. So, as a, you know, um, in, in keeping with that expectation, you and I know that we're going to discuss this thing as we are now. A lot of other uh, media houses have spoken about it. There's a lot of outrage and uproar on social media. Um, people are saying all sorts of things. Um, tomorrow, Friday, uh, November 24th, there's going to be something new. And we're going to move on. And nothing will happen. And this has been our experience. It's, it's our history. It's, it's how we do things in this country. So the politicians know that nothing will come of this. We'll make a lot of noise. It will blow over. And if it refuses to blow over, they will blow it over by putting something else out there. Because they have a very strong, well-oiled, um, well-financed um, information management and propaganda machinery. 
every politician in this country has that. You know, so when there are unfavorable, when there's unfavorable news um, or trending information out there about them, they find a way to to, to, to reflect, divert the attention of a very fickle public who do not pay attention to things that matter the most to them. So. No surprises in these responses, I'm afraid. Um, it's just the way we do things. Um, the, the governor has said the opera is unnecessary. Um, you know, it's an insulting response. Whether he said it directly by himself or his people said it, it's, it's an insult to the sensibilities of the questions that are being taxed through their noses, that are paying taxes for everything except the air that we breathe. I'm sure if the government had a way to tax us for the air that we breathe, they would. Um, another response has said that, oh, no, uh, uh, some of these items were a mistake. Um, the websites have been changed since uh, Mr. Funshon Dohati, God bless his heart, um, brought these things to light. Some of those items have been amended <laughs> on the public procurement website. And they've said, no, it was a mistake, it was a clerical error. Clerical error is beginning to become a citizen of this country now because we hear that name so often. Now, even in the judiciary, we're hearing about clerical errors, mm. right? So. It, it's just unfortunate. The responses from the government is just sad, and it shows um, it's symptomatic of a democracy that is not working. Um, we do not have a democracy in Nigeria. We have civil rule. In real democracies, public officials and politicians are afraid. They're scared. They're, 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 they're literally um, scared of the, the public, of public opinion and of the citizen. But Nigerian politicians are not scared of them. Nigerians are scared of Nigerian politicians and it's, it's symptomatic of a democracy that is simply not working. Our democracy is not working, I'm afraid. Mm. Okay, so let's move to the crux of the matter. Um, we're talking about the 440 million Naira SUV. And um, the Commissioner for Budget and Planning has said that it is for the office of the Chief of Staff, not for the Chief of Staff himself. But do you even think that office requires an SUV of that amount? And are there not better ways we can, you know, channel that fund into something else? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused by that response because I'm not sure I understand what the office of the chief of staff means as a distinction from the chief of staff. I mean, is there a human being called the office of the chief of staff that is different from the chief of staff? You know, so how does the office of the chief of staff get into a vehicle and drive it around? You know, a human being is going to enter that vehicle. Um, if it's not the chief of staff, then it be somebody in his office. So if that's what they mean, please, how does that make any difference? How does it make a difference that it is for the office of the chief of staff and not the chief of staff? You know, this is what I'm talking about. You know, it's this, this types of very... Look, I have to watch my language because I'm on air. And, you know, one could say extremely uncomplimentary things about people that, that speak to Nigerians like this. It, it's insulting to our intelligence to, to make these types of very... Then in name uh, completely ridiculous um, um, uh, distinctions for the office of the chief of staff versus the chief of staff himself. The point is not whether it was for the chief of staff or for the office of the chief of staff. It's that how does it make any sense to spend 440 million naira? My goodness, on one single vehicle? Are we are we are we joking? Are we a serious country? 440 million naira in a country where subsidies have just been removed, in a country where exchange rates is 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 flaming left right and center um with with a, with a, with a level of um volatility that is killing businesses on a daily basis where inflation is completely out of control of the central bank you know we talked about 440 million for one vehicle in this same lagos state madam if you look go to the hinterland of lagos state and look at the condition of schools mm. primary schools and secondary schools you will weep for your country you know when you see children in lagos state this center of excellence, this Lagos state where it is the model of beauty and, and it's utopian because of the work that the current president has done, just go to the, I'm not talking of very far away, come to Ogba, you know, go to Alimosho, just go be, behind any major street. Once you leave the third major road, just go behind and you see a new Lagos, you see a different Lagos, and you see that Lagos is, 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 is in trouble. The citizens of Lagos are living under conditions that are inhuman. And yet, the politicians have the confidence and the temerity 
to buy one vehicle with 440 million naira and then say it is for the office and not for the for the chief of staff you know it makes no sense um so so i think that we we need to continue to call these guys out and just um let them know that you know people are listening and one day you know justice will be done one day something will give you know we may appear to be helpless today but i can tell you that citizens are unhappy they are outraged and they are organizing i am aware of this citizens are organizing and it will only get to a point where you push so hard that you will not be able to push further again and people will push back it's just a matter of time the impunity that these guys speak with is extremely uncomplimentary and should be called out and and and, and spoken against in very strong terms Okay, well, I was just doing a little calculation in, on my phone right now. Uh, 440 million divided by 30,000, which is the minimum wage right now, will give you 14,666. So, which means uh, they're going to pay 14,666 people at the minimum wage uh, for the price of one car. And, but uh, you were talking, and I was just asking myself, like Scripture says, uh, should we continue in sin that grace Grace may abound? Uh, so... Do we always, uh, can we always just say that nothing will happen and then we let it go? Can something be done to hold these people accountable even more than we are trying to do now? Uh, because this money that we're talking about was for first and second quarter of 2023, which means someone has put pen to paper mm -hmm. and approved that money with the mistake. So did they discover that the mistake was there and they approved something less? Or that was what was approved for spending and all that, which means you know we need to do some more. Where did the money go to? What can we do? Should we just let it go? Well, um, sadly, Yango, sadly, nothing will happen. <laughs> this is just the truth. Nothing will happen, um, and the reason for this is not far fetched. We discuss this all the time. We all know it's the truth. Um, we are look countries that work democracies that work they work because citizens are active and they're engaged citizens deliberately take their governments to task they demand accountability of them and where the accountability is not forthcoming they kick them out either via the instrument instrumentality of elections or other means allowed under the law they kick them out right that will not happen here because the people that can make that happen are divided in Nigeria. So it's the middle class. The people that will hold, you know, the politicians accountable are the middle class, the educated, enlightened, well traveled middle class who are who, who are friends of the political elite. Do we still have the middle class in Nigeria? Account. Because you we just do. Use middle we class. Do. We have middle class. We do, we, we, do. we do. We do have a middle class. You may you may um, argue about the number of them. Mm. You may argue about how large that number of people are, but they exist. When I say middle class, I'm simply, let, let, let me define that. I'm not speaking only about the economic demographic. Mm. There are different elements that make a people qualify to be called middle class. One of them is education. One of them is exposure. One of them is access. Access to information and access to people, right? Networks. Um, the average guy on the street, the organizer, the mechanic, um, the welder, we can't call them middle class. They are the bottom of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. um, they cannot coalesce and organize themselves. They don't have the resources. They are too bothered about trying to live. They live on the daily economy. But there are people like you and I that are speaking now who either earn salaries or make money from their businesses and can survive for maybe a week, maybe two, without going to work. You are middle class and you are educated. You have access to platforms. Now, that group of people, um, they need to develop a consensus to say this far and no more. That is how other countries have developed. You have that group of people who have access to resources pushing back on the, on, on the political class and pushing back on public office holders. In Nigeria, we, that will not happen because that middle class itself is compromised and is deeply divided. The politicians know that these people are potentially their worst enemies and they've divided us. They've divided us shockingly around the issues, the very mundane and basic issues of race and religion, right? So during these elections, shockingly, you found professors, doctors, people with two doctorate degrees, 
people that have done dissertations, that have done very deep research on issues, on sociology, on technical issues, on science, you know, engineering, they, 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 they speak and you just hear very, very crass, basic, um, ethnic rhetoric. It was shocking. It was an eye-opener for me, right, that we could not engage our intellectual capacity, God-given and well self-developed, to look at issues dispassionately and pursue our self-interest as a people, as a country, that we would kill behind the person because he speaks our language or worships our God. That is where we are today. Our middle class is divided. We are fighting each other to a standstill, defending the indefensible, calling white black, simply because somebody speaks our language. And unfortunately, when you have that situation, we can't hold these guys accountable. And these guys know it. So they're going to play those issues up as much as they can so that we continue to fight amongst ourselves while they make away with our money. You know, and that's why I say nothing will happen. However, the bad news for the politicians is that it is not going to continue like this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it's an inevitability. It's going to happen. And I suspect, based on what I'm seeing, because I'm a civil society person, I am a part of different movements, unions, you know, labor, civil society, coalitions. And I can tell you that there is a momentum that is building. It may not develop into anything today. It may not develop into anything next year, but it will develop into something. It's just a matter of time. You know, this impunity cannot continue. Nigeria cannot keep running around in circles. 63 years now and counting, we don't have a steel industry. Our president keeps going. You know, every president, one after the other, starting from Obasanjo till Tinubu today, travels abroad to look for foreign investment. And yet, Ajakuta Steel Company has not worked in the 40 years that it has been set up. Which investment are we looking for? Please tell me, which country helped China to become what they are today? Which country did India went to to get foreign investment for that they have now become the third largest economy in the world? Which country did the United States um, 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 get help from? Which country helped Russia? Which country helped the UK and you know the EU? So our politicians need to understand that our solutions are inbuilt and they must be homegrown. All this junketing around, spending taxpayers' monies when the people in the country are suffering must stop. And one day, it will stop because we will say no more. It's just a matter of time. So, so the answer to your question, Yandul, is that it might continue for now. Nothing will happen. But it's not going to continue forever. We're going to do something about it eventually as a people. You know, it's, it's inevitable. It's just the way life works. Yep. Okay. Um, so, right, you know, what you just said about spending taxpayers' money, moving over to Abuja, the um, federal capital territory, the minister, Yensom Wiki, had said that he has saved about 110, um, yeah, 110 billion naira in three months. Now, shouldn't that be what everyone in politics, so if you're a governor, a commissioner, a uh, um, local government chairman shouldn't that be what we're supposed to do because thinking of it as a business um the business of nigeria let's call it that shouldn't we say okay we're not making profit so therefore we need to start cutting down and looking for ways to save instead of spending this monies absolutely um so you know uh but the wk sorry minister wk um i see now he is <laughs> um he, he said a good thing he said a good thing, um, and, and that should be the way to go. I, I may not like his style, but, you know, the guy is practical. Um, so, the president of the country must lead by example, my goodness. Everything in life, whatever field of endeavor that you're talking about, everything rises and falls on leadership. Mm -hmm. Everything. The outcomes that you get in any situation, in any society, once it's more than one human being, that is required to deliver that outcome. Leadership determines what that outcome will be. So you cannot have a situation where the president of the country is saying to the country, the country is broke, we're bankrupt. And as a result of being broke, we have a fiscal, um, a fiscal emergency. Um, we have fiscal um, obligations that are not sustainable. Therefore, we must take subsidies away. Subsidies to petroleum and subsidies, foreign exchange subsidies, must be taken away because Nigeria can't afford them. Okay, granted. Now, you have said that with imperious 
um, um, dispassion, dispassionate with, with dispassionate imperiousness. You said it as a speech, and you're even proud of it. You are boasting about it on an international platform that you announced the policy reform on your first day in office. You know, the president was boastful about this. I was shocked at the boastfulness because I thought, as a president, he would understand that even if that decision was required, it had impoverished millions, mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of Nigerians, and they were suffering and in pain. It was not something to boast about. It was something to be sober about. Now, you have done that, and in the same, this same president has then gone ahead and traveled to Onga meeting in New York and spent over 500 million naira. This same president, right? This same president has approved the purchase or the payment for a previously purchased yacht. Hmm. Yacht, for goodness sake, a boat, a luxury boat. That's what a yacht is. I don't care the explanations that they're giving about it being in the Navy. You know, we're not children, right? Um, this same president has approved four billion naira for the renovation of one single building. You know, I mean, these things are ridiculous. So, what uh, uh, Minister Wike did is what we expect the president of the country to be doing: to be leading by example and looking desperately for ways to save costs, mm. to cut costs, to to reduce expenses. The president is supposed to be saying to the people, we're not traveling anywhere, we're not going abroad. Mm -hmm. We're not going anywhere, it will cost too much money. We're going to sit down at home and look for ways to save money, to save the fiscal um, um, fortunes of the country. And we're going to look for ways to save money to expend on desperately needed capital in, in investment in the country. That is what we expect. So if it's not coming from the leadership, it's not a wonder that in Lagos, we are also spending 440 million on an SUV. Why? Because the president is leading by example. Mm. Everything rises and falls on leadership. So what Wike did is fantastic, it's commendable. We need the president to do the same, and we need the 36 chief executives that we have in all the states to do the same, and then it will trickle down across to the commissioners in their various ministries, across to all the ministers, and very importantly, it would also move across to the other arms of government so that we will now see the Senate and the and the House of Reps and the judiciary feeling the pressure, the moral pressure to follow suit. Otherwise, Nigerians will speak. But as it is now, there is no example to follow. The examples to follow are examples of financial profligacy, and it's it's, it's a tragedy given where we are as a country today. Mm. Well, Mr. Shopiton, we would like to urge you, uh, you not be, uh, the person, but uh, the civil society to lead this revolution. There is going to be a revolution, but it, it should be an alternative revolution because if we don't check it, the revolution might be a very, very um, terrible one that mm. we may not be able to, uh, to stand. We cannot survive another civil war. We cannot even survive another NSAS, but mm -hmm. there should be a revolution. Whether it's intellectual or anything, there should be that, and that fight should be led by the CSO, the civil society organizations and all that, which you are a part of. So we urge you, uh, we will be, we will queue behind you. Yes. Uh, but So we, we need to start you. thinking of alternatives to this revolution that is imminent, like you said, it is going to happen one day, but it should not be the one that will be bloody mm. and uh, bad for us tomorrow. But this is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. We'd like to thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, and uh, God bless Nigeria. One Amen day to that. Amen. 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 We've been talking to Mr. Shegun Shokwetson, uh, a public affairs analyst, and uh, we were looking at um, the spending of government, uh, you know, when they're making budgets and all that, and all the issues around that. And we do hope that you had a wonderful time on the show uh, this morning. Until we meet again tomorrow for the weekend edition, so to speak. Mm -hmm. My name is Nyamgul. Thank you for being there. My name is Rome Paulson. Have a good day.